What a great way to open. Michael Delphine, CCM doctoral student, thank you so much. How about another round of applause for it? And I should mention he's a native from Fresno, California, and he's studying under the tutelage of Awad Dodge and Pratt. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> well, good afternoon, folks, and thank you, everybody, for coming to this terrific event. Uh, this is where we celebrate the accomplishments of our faculty. So faculty and staff, thank you to, uh, for coming and celebrating the accomplishments of our colleagues. And to the family and friends here, also welcome to our campus. We're so glad you're here. Uh, I'm Neville Pinto. Uh, this is a very special honor for me to be at this ceremony for the first time as UC's president and to celebrate uh, the accomplishments of who I think selfishly is my colleagues, are my, my faculty friends. Uh, it doesn't seem possible, but we're almost at the end of another academic year. You know, as I grow older, this is not, this is the truth the, of relativity. Years get much shorter. So I just remember starting this academic year on a different campus, now I'm here, but uh, it's finishing really quickly. So today we gather to celebrate our outstanding faculty. Our faculty are the very foundation of our university. As teachers scholars, you educate our students and define our core being as a top public research university. It is faculty who have attracted over $429 million in research funding to support scholarship and creativity on our campus. UC is built on the talents and passionate commitment of, of, of over 6,600 full and part-time faculty members, dedicated scholars and mentors who infuse our students with a lifelong love of learning. For everything that UC faculty do each day to teach and mentor our students, to advance knowledge, create beauty, and improve our human condition, let's give them a round of applause. Joining in our celebration to today are members of our Board of Trustees. So I'd like to acknowledge their presence and if you would stand so we can acknowledge you being here. We have three Board of Trustees members and I'm just going to go from uh, left to right. Uh, Wim Portman, uh, Peg Valentine and Kim Hyman. Thank you so much for being here today. And let me introduce my colleague and friends on our stage here today. Co-hosting this event is our Provost, the Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, Peter Landgren. Also co-host and Faculty Chair, Sally Moomaw. Vice President for Research, Patrick Limbach. And and Senior Vice Provost Eileen Strempel. Thank you all for being here. And we have two very important people sitting right there, two of our students. I want to acknowledge all the help they've given, Trenton Feaster and Kareem el Galfi. Thank you for helping. So during our ceremony today, we recognize 16 award winners. They will receive our highest honors in teaching, research, service, innovation, and entrepreneurship. And now it is my pleasure to call on one of our co-hosts. Please welcome our faculty chair, Sally Mumo. I always have to adjust the mic after our seven foot tall president. <laughs> Thank you, President Pinto. I'm very excited to be here today to welcome you to this year's Faculty Awards Ceremony. President Pinto often refers to the faculty as drivers of the university. I know when I came to the University of Cincinnati as a freshman exactly 50 years ago, that's the way I felt about the faculty. I was amazed at how much they knew and quite frankly awed by them. I think we can see as we listen to the stories of the recipients of our faculty honors today that more than ever, our faculty is driving the university to higher and higher levels. 
And uh, so I'm very honored to be here to recognize the incredible achievements our, of our faculty in the areas of teaching, advising, technology, research, creative works, exemplary service, and entrepreneurship. So congratulations to all of you who are being honored today, and thank you so much for all that you do for the University of Cincinnati. Thank you, Sally. And now let's jump into, right into our first awards presentation. Our first presentations are focused on the area of teaching and student learning. In recognition of the tremendous contributions that adjunct faculty make to the success of our students, we present two outstanding adjunct, adjunct faculty awards. About our first winner, his nominator says, he gets the best from our students because as an alum, he has a strong love for our program. And for our second recipient, one of his nominators notes, he cares deeply about the individual welfare and success of each student with whom he works. Please hold your applause until we've learned more about both of them. Students in the Capstone Aircraft Design courses of Mark Fellows literally take flight. They get extra propulsion from his 36-year career in aeronautical systems at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. As a UC alumnus and now adjunct professor in aerospace engineering, he has followed decades devoted to fighter jets and national defense with an amazing devotion to students and the next generation of aerospace leaders. Dana Gregory Griffith remembers what it was like to feel lost as a college student, so he views students as projects who need encouragement to persist. Affectionately known as Dr. G, the adjunct assistant professor in Judaic and Asian studies is known as one of the best teachers in the university honors program. Maybe it's because he learned from some of the best as an undergraduate and grad student right here at UC. His mentors have also included Zen Masters and the Dalai Lama. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our two winners of the Outstanding Adjunct Faculty Awards from the College of Engineering and Applied Science, Mark Fellows, and from the College of Arts and Sciences, Dana, Greg, Dr. G. Griffith. <laughs> Congratulations, Mark Fellows and Dana Griffith. Our next award is co-sponsored by the Center for the Enhancement of Teaching and Learning and the Center for Excellence in E-Learning. The Innovative Uses of Technology in Teaching Award acknowledges the importance of continuously improving how we teach and harnessing the power of new technologies to meet students' needs and enhance learning outcomes. This year's Outstanding Teaching Innovator has created a course that fills within hours after registration opens. To meet the demand, the college has doubled the number of sections and all have filled to capacity. And now let's hear more about our winner. To make sure his students don't feel disconnected from the theories taught in his new product development course, Elliot Manzon gives them something real life to work on. The faculty member in marketing asks them to create a Kickstarter campaign. Among their concepts have been a magnifier for cell phone screens and a popsicle stick holder to prevent messes. One of his student teams has even applied for a patent. Please give a warm welcome to our recipient of the Innovative Uses of Technology and Teaching Award from the Lindner College of Business, Elliot Manzon. <laughs> Our 
Our students founded our next award in 1968 to show their appreciation for a former geology professor and former dean of the McMicken College of Arts and Sciences. The George Barber Award for Good Faculty-Student Relations is one that requires the nominations be made only by students and alumni. It recognizes faculty who go above and beyond to meet students' needs. This year's winner is described by her student nominator as a one-of-a-kind professor. She's an advocate for her students, but also gives honest feedback and critique. She's hardworking, humble, and hilarious. And the winner of the, of the George Barber Award, our 50th winner of this award since its inception, its inception is for Stephanie sauter Afahi, there is little more exciting than introducing students to complicated issues of race and ethnicity, gender, identity, and other topics. She loves seeing them make meaningful connections both to their own lives and the world at large. Her department head describes the Associate Professor of Anthropology as a 21st century teacher-scholar like no other. A passionate advocate and supporter of student activism, she has also grown her department's Twitter account by over 900% and his Facebook account by over 500%. Please welcome to the stage the winner of our George Barber Award for Good Faculty-Student Relations from the College of Arts and Sciences, Stephanie sauter Afahi. Congratulations, Stephanie, and thank you for traveling back for your, from your research work in New York to be here with us today. Like the Barber Award, our next award requires the nominations to come from students or alumni. The Mrs. A.B. Dolly Cohen Awards recognize excellence in teaching. Yearly, we award two. One of our winners for 2017 says that he decided to be a teacher when he was in the sixth grade. The other says she learns the most about her job and the type of teacher she wants to be from the students themselves. Please turn your attention to our screen as we learn more about both, both winners. Throughout his 12-year teaching career at the Linder College of Business, Rick Sweeney has accumulated a bevy of awards for outstanding teaching and service to students. His warm-hearted and deep connection to them keeps him in touch long after they graduate. It also involves him as faculty advisor to a large number of organizations. His students know him as an engaging lecturer and mentor who puts them first. Before the toughest exams, students at the Winkle College of Pharmacy can often be heard saying, may the Weigel be with you. That's because for 16 years at UC, Associate Professor Patricia Weigel has become a life force for the college. You've heard of R2-D2? Well, Weigel co-founded P1-P3. It's a peer mentoring program to help students overcome struggles to meet their goal of graduation. Please welcome to the stage the two winners of our Mrs. A.B. Dolly Cohen Award for Excellence in Teaching from the Lindner College of Business, Rick Sweeney, and from the Winkle College of Pharmacy, Patricia Weigel. <laughs> Congratulations, Rick and Patricia. Now we turn our attention to our final award in the teaching category, the title of Distinguished Teaching Professor. It is the highest teaching honor that the University of Cincinnati presents. A former student of this year's winner attests that our 2017 Distinguished Teaching Professor taught her how to establish a connection with patients. I truly do not believe I would be the advocate for my patients that I am today without her inspiring educational endeavors, the alumnus said. 
Our winner this year is the 23rd recipient of this title since it was established in 1991. Christine Colella joined the faculty at her alma mater, UC's College of Nursing, more than 20 years ago. She stands at the forefront of using classroom technology. She has developed teaching strategies that use iPad mobile applications. Prior to the title she earns today, she has won several teaching awards, including the American Association of Colleges of Nursing Innovation and Teaching Excellence Award. Let's give a round of applause to the 2017 Distinguished Teaching Professor from the College of Nursing, Christine Colella. <laughs> Congratulations to all our teaching award winners. I now invite co-host Interim Provost Peter Landgren to come forward for our recognition of the 2017 inductees into the Academy of Fellows for Teaching and Learning. Peter. Thank you, President Pinto, and it's good to have such a wonderful crowd here to celebrate uh, the best of the best of our faculty. The Academy of Fellows for Teaching and Learning is an elite group with members elected by their peers here at the University of Cincinnati. Their ranks are also approved by vote of the UC Board of Trustees. To honor the high achievement that fellow status represents, President Pinto will present medals to, to the 2017 fellows who have been selected for this prestigious academy. I invite Professor Anton Harfman, the President-elect of the Academy of Fellows for Teaching and Learning, to join us on stage as we begin this presentation. Please save your applause until we have brought each of the fellows uh, here today onto the stage. So let's call them one by one. Tracy Herman from the UC Blue Ash College. Christopher Swoboda, College of Education, Criminal Justice and Human Services. Krista Wood, UC Blue Ash College. Not attending today are fellows Miriam Rader Roth and Melissa Steck of the College of Nursing. Let's have a round of applause for our new inductees in the Academy of Fellows for Teaching and Learning. University faculty awards have been an annual tradition since the 1960s. We are fortunate to be joined today by many of the past winners, and there are well over 200 past recipients who are still with us. It is my pleasure to invite all of the previous award winners in our audience today to please stand, though we know that not all 200 will be here so we can recognize you. pretty good number, I'd say. And now, as someone for myself who has served five years as the Dean of the College Conservatory of Music prior to being asked to serve as interim provost at UC, it's a special treat for me to introduce a musical performance featuring our CCM talent. The Andrew W. Mellon Foundation has graciously provided funding to enable CCM in cooperation with the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra to create a prestigious program a fellowship program for exceptional string players. And after you hear them, you will understand how exceptional they truly are. The CCM CSO Diversity Fellowship Program provides an unparalleled two-year learning experience for graduate level players that are members of historically underrepresented groups in the world of classical music. Today, we're fortunate to have two of our first year of five fellows with us, cellist, 
Deanna Flores has performed extensively throughout the United States, Canada, Brazil, China, Japan, and in her home country of Costa Rica. At age nine, she started playing cello at the Instituto Nacional de Musica in San Jose. Ten years later, Flores moved to Boston to complete her undergraduate studies at the Longy School of Music. She now holds a master's degree from the Chicago College of Performing Arts and is currently an artist diploma candidate at CCM. Joining her is another cellist, Blake Anthony Johnson from Atlanta, Georgia. Blake Anthony was a prize winner at the Music Teachers National Association Young Artist Competition, the World Competition, and the Daniel Raines and Brevard Music Festival Concerto Competitions. He is also a 2017 Virtue Foundation grant and uh, scholarship recipient winner. Our duo will perform for us today two pieces, Glier's Opus 53, number four, and, and Coomer's Opus 22, number one in C major, their second movement. Please welcome to our stage, Diana Flores and Blake Anthony Johnson.
Blake Anthony. What a treat. Let's give him one more round of applause. I'm Pat Limbach, Vice President for Research. Our ceremony now turns attention to our faculty awards in the area of discovery and innovation. But before we introduce the first winner in this category, I want to take a moment to congratulate and thank all of our research faculty for our collective achievements. For the fiscal year 2016, UC and affiliates reached the second highest level of research funding in our history with 429 million in total funding. I think that deserves a round of applause. And now to our awards. Our first award in this category is for entrepreneurial achievement. Over the past five years, our university has experienced changed and increased support in our business startup environment. These efforts were featured earlier this month in an article in the journal Nature. Moreover, this publication showcased the growing bio boom in the state of Ohio's life science research and innovation. And the 2017, 2017 winner, winner of our Emerging Entrepreneurial Achievement Award is an example of that growing success. He is a scientist who has combined his clinical, educational, and research sides into an idea that could change outcomes for a condition suffered by 5.7 million patients a year in the US alone, costing over 32 billion annually. And the winner is? Jack Rubenstein has spent 20 years working and teaching in healthcare. An associate professor of medicine, he has an active cardiovascular laboratory funded by the National Institutes of Health and American Heart Association. His laboratory has successfully licensed its first compound to a Cincinnati-based pharmaceutical startup. The drug already holds FDA approval, but holds promise for a new purpose, the transformation of the treatment of heart failure around the world. Please welcome the recipient of the 2017 Emerging Entrepreneurial Achievement Award from the College of Medicine, Jack Rubenstein. <laughs> Congratulations again, Dr. Rubenstein. From entrepreneurship, we now move to distinguished scientific research, scholarship, and creativity. Our next two awards are named for George Rivasol, Jr., the inventor of Benadryl. George was an inquisitive thinker who was always on the lookout for ways to make the University of Cincinnati, his alma mater, better. He sent stacks of articles on a variety of topics on a regular basis to the office of the president no matter who was at the helm. He was not just an alumnus, but he was also a faculty member who had worked in the corporate world. He also founded our UC Foundation. And awards that bear his name reflect his interest in the full range of professional research and scholarship. One is for distinguished scientific research, while the other is for creative and or scholarly works. And now let's meet our two winners for 2017. Professor Stanley Corkin views American history through the lens of a film camera. For 30 years, he has taught history, American literature, and film, holding faculty positions in English and history. He has written four monographs during his career so far. The most recent focuses on the gritty Baltimore-based TV drama, The Wire. Corkin continues to develop a film program in ANS and is working on his fifth book. It focuses on Boston as a media presence in the post-industrial world. As a native of the island of Cyprus, Dion Dionisiu knows firsthand the value of water. The UC environmental engineering professor has devoted his 17-year research career to the need to secure clean, drinkable water in arid countries and the developing world. He has worked on more than 50 water quality projects, and his research has received millions of dollars in funding from national and international organizations, including the NSF, 
US EPA, and NASA. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our two Rivashul Award winners to the stage. The winner of the George Rivashul Jr. Award for creative and or scholarly work, Stanley Corkin. And the winner of the George Rivashul Jr. Award for distinguished scientific research, Dion Dionisiu. Next up is our companion award to the distinguished teaching professor presented early in our ceremony. This time it focuses on research and represents the highest honor our university bestows for faculty career achievements in research. It confers the title of distinguished research professor and the winners must provide documented evidence of national and international stature. Please hold your applause as we meet our two winners. Virtually anyone who drops a cell phone can thank UC professor Poonit Bulshand if the screen does not break. Bulshand and his research team at the College of Engineering and Applied Science have revolutionized glass science. His discovery of the Bulshand intermediate phase led to the creation of Corning Gorilla Glass, which is used in more than one billion cell phones and tablets around the world. The discovery also has implications for TVs and other devices. Inspired by her past as a secretary working under dysfunctional bosses, communication professor Gail Fairhurst has made organizational communication her main research focus. Among her many published articles is one that has earned distinction as one of the most influential papers to be published in the past 25 years by the Communication Theory publication. Since joining the UC faculty in 1979, she has become one of the world's most productive and visible communication scholars. Please welcome to the stage our two newest distinguished research professors. From the College of Engineering and Applied Science, Poonit Bulshant, and from the College of Arts and Sciences, Gail Fairhurst. Congratulations to all five of our Discovery and Innovation honorees. And I now invite my friend, Provost Peter Langren, back to the podium as we recognize the fellows of the Graduate School. Thank you, Pat. As we conclude the portion of our program that honors research, scholarship, creativity, we now recognize the newest members of the fellows of the Graduate School. I invite Lewis Owens to join us on stage as the chair of the Fellows Selection Committee. Please save your applause until we have brought all of the new fellows of the Graduate School with us onto the stage today. David Askew from the College of Medicine. Anthony Chimero, College of Arts and Sciences. Haranguan, College of Arts and Sciences. Margaret Hansen from the College of Arts and Sciences.
Todd Herzog as well from the College of Arts and Sciences. Jonathan Krieger from the College Conservatory of Music. Brian McKenzie from the College of Medicine. From Leadership Cincinnati Class 36, Charles Matthews from the Linder College of Business. David Mom from the College of Arts and Sciences. Siva, Siva Gandarshan from the College of Arts and Sciences. And Pangiotis Smirniotis from the College of Engineering and Applied Science. Did I miss somebody? I think I missed, did I miss Kevin Shockley? There we are, from the College of Arts and Sciences. Don't wanna miss that. And fellows not able to attend today are Russell Durst from the College of Arts and Sciences, Magda Pelagrad from the College of Arts and Sciences, Nagashwiri Shumalingam from the College of Arts and Sciences, and Willem, William Miller from the College of Arts and Sciences. Let's have a round of applause for our new inductees and the fellows of the Graduate School. That's right. Once again, let's have a round of applause for our fellows of the graduate school. Each year, there's a tradition to take a moment during the ceremony to recognize the accomplishments of our faculty and what they have achieved by earning the most prestigious national and international awards. The University of Cincinnati is fortunate to have world-class faculty second to none. On the screen right now, we highlight the members of our academy who have won these accolades over the past 12 months. Please hold your applause as we scroll through the names. These are really very acclaimed awards. The names of these recipients are also uh, printed in your program. Congratulations to all of our distinguished scholars. And now, our final four awards of the afternoon. Two focusing on service and two focusing on career achievement. Our faculty awards for exemplary contributions in service to the university salute the unsung heroes who make our shared governance system work. The university is populated with a vast array of committees that toil long and hard to provide the best possible outcomes and decisions for our great university. The faculty members who serve on these committees often tend to be the same stalwarts who step up when needed time and time and time again. These awards sponsored by the Faculty Senate are one small way to say thank you for the dedication, selflessness, and passion 
involved in volunteering for these efforts. And let's watch to see who our winners are. Along with an impressive career in the classroom and in her field of radiologic technology, UC Blue Ash professor Tracy Herman has always made service to the university a priority. She has been a valued member of the UC Faculty Senate for the past 10 years and was faculty chair from 2014 to 2016. She has served on many committees, notably co-chairing the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion in the Curriculum Initiative. She has also served on the recent UC Presidential Search Committee, as well as the UC Blue Ash College Strategic Planning Task Force. In addition to serving as a faculty senator and on Senate Cabinet, Victoria Wangia Anderson represents faculty interests on a variety of committees. She has earned a reputation as someone who knows how to get things done. She chairs the Faculty Senate Information Technology Committee. There, she has provided leadership in sometimes contentious discussions related to IT enterprise solutions. Please give a warm welcome to our two winners of the Faculty Award for Exemplary Service to the University. From UC Blue Ash, Tracy Herman, and from the College of Allied Health Sciences, Victoria Wangia Anderson. Tracy and Victoria for all of their volunteerism. I think people who give of themselves deserve one more gift from you of their applause. <laughs> the final two awards are called the Provost Faculty Career Awards. They recognize the long-term achievements and contributions of, of a distinguished faculty member who has served at the rank of full professor with 10 or more years of service to UC. Honorees must demonstrate career accomplishment in teaching, research, and service with some degree of excellence in each of these three areas. Our two winners will be introduced in alphabetical order, and rather than having the announcers talk about them, I'm going to tell you about their impressive accomplishments. Both are faculty members who truly have been exemplary in all of their aspects of being a university faculty member. Our first faculty career award today recognizes Michael Privatera of the College of Medicine. Michael and Dr. Privatera, please join me so I can tell the people more about you. Dr. Privatera has dedicated his career to the discovery of new treatments and care for people with epilepsy. For nearly three decades, he has led the Ep Epilepsy Center at the UC Gardner Neuroscience Institute, the first comprehensive epilepsy center in our region. With a research focus on new anti-epileptic drugs, generic equivalents, and stress as a leisure per uh, precipitant, he has produced over 150 peer-reviewed publications, including articles in the New England Journal of Medicine, Lancet, and brain. He has also directed more than 50 clinical studies in epilepsy treatment and mentored dozens of res residents, fellows, graduate students, and postdocs. He has served as a reviewer for the National Institutes of Health and U.S. Food and Drug Administration and in leadership positions across the university and with American Epilepsy Society. With the latter, he served on the board of directors since 2005 and as president in 2016. Currently, Dr. Privatera is conducting clinical trials with a derivative of marijuana to study its effectiveness in seizure reduction. Positive results indicate a push for FDA approval in the next year. Let's all please congratulate Dr. Privatera. <laughs>
Our second faculty career winner is Professor Michael Solomini of the College of Law. Please join me on stage, Michael, as I tell the audience about your many career achievements. In a career spanning three decades, Michael Solomini has built a firm career uh, defined by a constant devotion to teaching, research, and serving the academic and professional communities. Over the course of his career, he has developed a, a remarkable reputation as a researcher in the field of law, earning the distinction of being one of the most cited civil procedure professors in the United States for the last half decade. His work has, uh, has been seen in publications across more than 70 law review articles, book chapters, and book reviews. His scholarship has been influential in the nation's courts, with his work cited by none other than Judge Ruth Bader Ginsburg for a Supreme Court case. As a prominent figure in the College of Law, his colleagues and students have taken note of his constant professionalism, kindness, and his role as a champion for the college's core values of collegiality, due process, and transparency. Holding the title of the Donald P. Kleekamp Professor of Law, he has been known to his students as a professor who can translate legalese into English, as he has transformed seemingly abstract concepts into comprehensible lessons. He has served as a valuable mentor for the legal professionals under his tutelage with his immense knowledge for, of all forms of federal courts and civil procedure, making him an invaluable research resource for his many students. In addition to his research and teaching service, he has shown a strong commitment to serving his community, helping new faculty members as a key figure on the RPT committee and multiple deaconal review boards and appearing as a consistent staple of faculty senate. Congratulations, Professor Michael Solomini. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you again, both, both Michael Prevatera and Michael Solomini for their many years of outstanding service to UC. And now I'll hand it over back to our new president, President Neville Pinto. Well, thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Um, this ceremony is made possible by many people working behind the scenes. There are several committees that do the hard work of soliciting nominations and reading through the applications to select the individuals we honor. Please hold your applause while I acknowledge the chairs of each committee. Edna Konishiro, Barbara Cohen Committee, Patrick Limbach, Distinguished Research Professors, Damian Weimer, Distinguished Teaching Professor, Outstanding Adjunct Faculty Award, and Provost Faculty Career Awards. Carol Wheeler Strother, Faculty Awards for Exemplary Contributions in Service Committee, Dorothy Ayer, Entrepreneurship Awards Committee, Litza Cranius, Reversal Award for Distinguished Scientific Research Committee, Nicasio Urbina, Reversal Award for Creative and or Scholarly Works Committee, and Pat Reed, Innovative Uses of Technology in Teaching Awards Committee. Thank you for all your hard work. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, Michael Delphine, for providing our spectacular piano music today. And to our CCM cellists, uh, Diana and Blake Anthony, sitting here in the first row, thank you very much. Before we recess to our refreshments and reception in the rear of the room, please remain seated for a few minutes as we share one final salute to our award winners. And after that, I will invite all our faculty award recipients to join me on stage for one final photograph. And now for the video salute.
congratulations once again to all the winners and thank you for coming.